Hey everybody, it looks like we are alive. Thank you so much for hanging out. Happy holidays. I'm very excited. I hope you guys are excited. I hope you guys can hear me. Give me a shout out that you can hear me. And let's see who we have today. We have Roy Color Graphics from New Jersey. How are you? We also have JP Taz. And JP, tell me where you're from. Uh, great to see you. We have Mr. Brad Murray from Manitoba, Canada. Great to see you. Mr. Willie, how are you all the way from Massachusetts? And we have Mr. Dwayne Marshall from, from California. Great to see you, sir. So we have a great uh, group already. And we're going to pretty much uh, wait till more people come in because I don't know if you've seen it in the announcement. But we are going to basically reveal the first, second, and third prize winners, which is really fantastic. Rick, how are you? Great to see you all the way from Montreal. How's everything, sir? So glad you are here. So that is great. Oh, wow. J, uh, JP Taz is from Texas. Great to see you. So glad you're here. Texas is a wonderful state. Uh, a lot of great people from there. A lot of talented artists, so I'm so glad to see you. And so, as you know, we're still working on the lovely and talented Paula Ray. So, I'm excited about that. Colette, how are you? All the way from Wisconsin. So great to see you, Colette, as always. And let's see. So, I'm going to get the picture of Paula. There she is. So, that's what we're who we're working from today and of course here is the side view right always good to have that side view dun 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 let me see if i can do it without getting yeah that's not bad maybe i could kind of have it less topsy-turvy oh that's why there's something underneath that's what that's doing and bring that right there so you can see what I'm doing, which is, Dennis, how are you? Great to see you all the way from the Dallas, Texas area. So two Texans today. Glad to see you. So I'd love to hear um, what you all have been doing for the holidays. How was your holiday? Any new painting ideas? Trying new things in airbrush and, uh, you know, love to hear. Uh, always excited to hear the projects everyone is working on. So let's see. So this, dun, 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 this is going to be the Extreme Patriot Arrow that I'm shipping out to the winner. And let's see here. Whoops. See that nice and big. Let me focus that. There it is. It's customized by myself, by me, and manufactured departs from Badger. But uh, just a beautiful piece of precision airbrushing equipment. Really happy. It's $149 a value. And that was donated by Mike Deloach, is a great friend of the channel. And so I want to thank him for making this contest happen, which is great. Gary, how are you? How's everything? I'm so glad you're here. How's everything going, Gary? And Willie says he hasn't been doing much. How was my Christmas? It was nice. So, Willie, I couldn't go to my other sister's house because it's too far and I don't, uh, I'm able to, I was unable to get there. But my other sister who lived close, closer picked me up and I had dinner by her and her family. And that was really nice. So, thanks for asking. That was a nice Christmas. How about yourself, sir? Did you... Did you have a lot of good food on Christmas and family over, Willie? I hope so. Uh, oh, yes, Scotland. Perfect. So glad you're here. Are you by Glasgow by any, any chance? Great people. So in my ancestry DNA, I think I have like 4% Scottish in me. So, so we're brothers. <laughs> that is cool. So so glad you're, you're, you're here. So glad you're doing well. So as you can see, this is where we are in our portrait of Paula Ray. I'm really excited about how she's coming out. Um, 
you know, it's adding the white after I put in the initial layers of the Airbrush India ink with a detail mixture. It was risky, but I think it paid off really well. Oh, a lot of food. Yeah, too much food. That's, that's just how it goes on Christmas, right, sir? Definitely. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to start uh, bringing up some of the uh, participants of the contest in, in no order. And I won't uh, announce, I won't say who's, who it is until it actually wins, so if the person actually wins first, second, and third prize. They all get awards because only three people entered, so I'm excited about that. So let me go ahead and see if I can get the first picture. Uh, let's see, image, and we'll go here. Okay, so in no particular order, here is the first one. And this is the first um, of uh, Laura Dern, which I really love. I think it's fantastic. I think they did a great job. I love the details in the, uh, I love the details in the uh, insignia and the different textures. I'm really excited about the expression and the teeth and the hair. This is just a beautiful piece. So that's the first entry. And now let's see if we can go ahead and get that second entry. These are in no order. And so before I announce, uh, let's go with number two. The second one will be showing. This one right here, very powerful rendition. Uh, love the emotion in this piece. Just beautiful. Uh, the edge work and the textures are just out of this world. Really happy with it. I think it's a, an amazing showing. So that is so nice. The values and everything are really spot on. Just really a home run. And now we're going to, I'm going to get the third. And so you can see they did a great job. Now the contest was that they had to do a portrait of Laura Dern. And it's, it's really cool as you can see how each of the artists actually picked a totally different mood right i mean that i think is so fantastic how you see the different moods of these three uh just an amazing showing and i just want to thank these these artists for taking the time to go ahead and enter this contest and i'm so excited and i hope to do more like this uh, I've just been so swamped with a lot of things, you know, the channel, a lot of things. So I was going to originally announce it in December 7th, but it kept getting pushed back because I wanted to find a very non-partisan person. And I didn't reveal who the artist was in any of these pictures. The person who actually judged it, just seeing them. Uh, just cold right just you know for the first time and they had some great things to say so what I'm going to do is I am going to see if I can go ahead and uh, read what she said about uh, these paintings so let me see if I could get there bear with me okay so um, almost there okay so um, let me see okay so number one they said uh, this one right here they said oh number one is this one right here 
and uh, the person said that uh, number one um, the symmetry and the soft edges and multiple shades of gray used uh, they said that they really enjoyed the uh, full range of, of shades here the subtleties they said that it was really nice and and then they also talked about um, the second one right here and says that really love the the texture and the contrast on this one and then for for the first one here, they said, let me see what they said. Love the emotion and also the details and and the smile and also the 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 boldness of picking such a, a difficult uh, a difficult expression and everything like that. So very exciting. So the, um, the, the person who judged it is, uh, let me see her name, I get it right, Angela at Kamansky. She, she, is, uh, she studied with uh, Drew Blair many times, a uh, very accomplished artist, did some really great things, and I thought she would be a really good impartial uh, judge for this. So today, uh, so I'm going to announce what the winners get. So the first prize gets the, let me just uh, lower these here. So the first prize gets the airbrush, which is $149 value. The second prize winner, they get a full set of the Airbrush India inks. And uh, so that is really fantastic. And also the full set of Airbrush India inks and the white mixture. And third prize gets a uh, Ink Flingers mug. And uh, so we'll have the Ink Flingers on one side. But the really cool thing is that it will be uh, the artwork of their choice on the other side. So they can pick one of their paintings on one side and then it'll have the ink flingers on one side and uh, and it'll be personalized. So the airbrush first prize, full set of the airbrush India inks for the second prize and a customized mug with the uh, ink flingers uh, insignia, their name and one of their paintings on the other side which is really exciting. So what I'll do is I'll actually go ahead and put for, for third prize, I'll put the painting on that mug, the one at one third prize. I think that would be great. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let me see how many people are in our little group here. Uh, we have uh, we have a good amount. Let's see who's here, who jumped in. We have, hey John Fig, how you doing? Great to see you. Thanks so much for hanging out. Oh, John said he received his uh, 105 from me the other day. What a great airbrush it is. Oh, yes, all the way from Australia. I didn't recognize you. How are you, my friend? So John is all the way from Australia, and he purchased the Extreme Patriot Arrow, and I'm so happy that he is very happy uh, with the airbrush. That makes me so happy. I just labor over these, uh, Mr. John Fig, and I'm so glad that you enjoy that airbrush. Thank you so much for your patience. So thanks, John, for coming aboard. Honey, how are you? Great to see you. And we also have Hillbilly Abel. How are you? How's everything going? Great to see you. Haven't seen you in a while, but I'm very happy you're here. And Hillbilly Abel, you were from Nevada, if I'm not mistaken. And Honey's from Long Island. And John is, John Fig is from Australia what a wonderful wonderful uh, treat it is to see you today and Gary where are you from Gary from Scotland okay so we got where everyone is from so right now we're gonna announce uh, the winners of the contest 
So here we go. We're going to go with the first prize. And let's see. I am going to... Uh, let's see if I can get the first prize. Uh, first prize is this one right here. So this is what uh, Angela picked for first prize. This is for, uh, Juan Carlos Berrio. Uh, he is uh, from Colombia and he lives in England. And this was just a fantastic, wonderful uh, piece. I, I love the expression. I love the softness and the way that the silvery lights kind of uh, hit on hit on her expression and everything like that. So very excited about that. And then second prize, and this goes to Mr. Brad, Brad Mummery, and all the way from Manitoba. Just an amazing painter, love his stuff. Uh, he's just doing amazing. Looking at this, I just love the Ferrari insignia, uh, the way he makes everything turn, the anatomy is all first rate so congratulations and that's a full set of the airbrush india ink and uh so that's going to be going out to you shortly and then last but not least our third prize winner is this uh amazing piece by zavi everybody knows zavi and just i love the different approach in this painting it is just amazing uh just you know the expression the the power uh the pathos right of this piece is just right on the money so thank you everybody for for applying thank you for mike deloach for uh going ahead and uh contributing the airbrush donating the airbrush to 149 dollars for the first prize so I can't say enough how much I, I love these paintings. I just think they're just amazing. So once again, uh, Juan Carlos Barrios, Brad Mummery, and Zavi. So just amazing work. If you, if you have their email addresses, they're not here, just go ahead and contact them. Let them know that they want. I'm going to send them an email as well. So this was uh, a really big night. I'm so happy to, uh, to share this. Maybe we'll do something like this soon. Uh, you know, that is um, really great. So once again, they're gonna get the customized Extreme Patriot Arrow and uh, customized by myself. And that's going to the first prize winner, full set of the Airbrush India inks. And I'm gonna draw in this, uh, the white mixture in with that. And third prize is the mug, Ink Flingers, with the winning painting of Zabi's. So that's how that's going to go down with Zabi's name. It's going to look really great. So thank you so much, honey, for the congratulations. Thanks, Tone. Thank you for the congratulations for the winners. So that was pretty cool. So we got that out of the way. Yes, just great artwork. And hopefully next time... More people will contribute because you are all so talented out there, and I draw a lot of a lot of inspiration from everyone's work. So uh, that would be just amazing. So okay, so now let's get down to business. Yeah, all three were awesome, weren't they, Willie? Just fantastic, and they were all done with the airbrush India inks which made me proud. They didn't have to. It, it could have been an inks, but they all chose to do the Airbrush India inks. And I believe all three paintings were done with the Extreme Patriot Arrow, uh, except for Zabi's. I don't think Zabi's was done with the Extreme Patriot Arrow. Uh, I think he dam uh, his was damaged. So, but very cool. And oh, congratulations, Brad. Uh, just an amazing showing. So glad you participated. You are raising your level. Brad is raising the bar on his work. And, you know, when you guys raise the bar, you make me raise the bar, you know? And just amazing stuff. 
everyone is so busy it was so hard to find somebody who was available <laughs> to judge the contest and I just thank God I found Angela she was very gracious and willing to take the time out of her busy schedule to look at the work and one of the things she said that it was so hard to pick a winner uh, pick one two and three so that is is just great um, I um, so I asked several people a lot of people were busy like I said so it was kind of tough to get them so right now what I did is I put four drops of the detail mixture four drops of water sort of a one-to-one -one with that detail mixture and so let's mm -hmm. see so looking at this I think I'm just going to develop the clavicle the sternocleidomastoid the sternum and you know maybe a little bit of the deltoid in the chromium process so what I want to do is I want to talk about these uh, customized stencils uh, I would say not say they're stencils customized shields that I make and they're just fantastic uh, really great and let me go ahead and cover everything except for where I'm going to work what that does it kind of maintains the edges the edge quality I want if I want to soften an edge I want to be doing it myself and not letting the airbrush decide for me right that's that's something that we want to uh, sometimes it doesn't cut really clear like rather than me to go guns blazing and go right in there I'm going to take a few moments just to fix that right so what I highly recommend is always go that extra mile and if you see anything that's off just fix it you know take that moment uh, it's gonna really pay off a lot of little adjustments that you know you see that it just doesn't look right to go ahead and fix it is really going to pay off so I have my exacto numbers and see right here just gonna cut that perfect see now I have this smooth edge that's not weird so now when I put this on it's gonna be correct otherwise I could have sprayed and I would have spent time trying to fix it I'd rather spend time having fun talking to you than than sweating trying to fix things after I sprayed so the great thing about airbrush is that it works so well with other mediums and that's what I'm really uh, really exploring lately is trying to find all the different mediums that airbrush uh, can enhance and also other mediums can enhance the airbrush so I'm pretty happy with the edge work so far and I just want to also thank God for today and for the strength and the, the roof over my head and the heat and the lights to do this live stream. I always want to thank God for that. Uh, thank God for you guys, uh, you know, for being here and sharing this time with me. It, I don't take it lightly. So thank you everybody for being here and thank God for letting it all happen. Uh, let, let it let it be all possible. So now I'm gonna go ahead and look for my Paula photo here. I used the, the uh, Pure Wrath, and Pure Wrath is just amazing. Ah, thank you so much. Willie Willie says thank you for me. That means a lot to me, my friend. Thank you so much. And as you can see, I'm going to periodically just switch on to different angles, right, so you could you know kind of see what's happening this and that and so right now I'm gonna make sure that my my uh, customized shield is in the right position and I want to kind of begin to get subtle like try and be as subtle as possible and uh, not be too harsh that's one of the easiest things we can do is get too harsh when we're painting and so let's move this, move her over here, maybe a little bit bigger, so we can see both there. Okay, so right here we have the sternocleidomastoid muscle coming down. 
and I want to protect that because that's a lighter area and then this is a harder edge and I'm going to move the light because I'm getting some wicked shadowing here just like so and I'm going to lower my value with that pack valve and let's get a small magnet I find the small magnets are great because they're lower profile and they cause less of a shadow right so I'm going to cover where I don't want to spray and this way I I'm spraying where I want to spray and covering where I don't and I'm just remember perpendicular not parallel because we want that kind of smoothness and I lowered that pack valve a little too much so I gotta come back and bring this back here and then bring this down There we go. So you see I'm establishing this really nice sternocleidomastoid coming down here. And now what I can do is maybe just kind of sculpt the details over here. I'm about three inches away. No more. Right? About three inches away. And I'm just going to move. So the, the trick is, well, there's a lot of tricks. Sort of. The technique is, is with airbrush, you want to be constantly moving. So when you move, you're, you're not going to have a cluster of value. So when you move, you're going to have a nice, smooth gradation. You're not going to put too much value in one area. And you see, as I, I'm moving, then I start to spray. You don't want to spray and then move because when you spray and then move, Unfortunately, you already uh, kind of got that concentration of value in that spot where you didn't want it. So if you're moving, even if your airbrush isn't working correct, like maybe you get a blowout, if you're moving toward doing it, it's going to be less of a disaster. So always think about it. Your movement is really important. Movement and distance. You know, those are two, one of the wonderful things. Here it's a little bit darker than this, but it's darker here. So uh, I think this area is probably being uh, dark, uh, obscured, the light is being obscured by her hair here. So as we are going more towards the hair, it's going to be slightly darker and gets lighter as it moves away from that cast shadow of the hair. So all these different things when I'm painting, I'm always trying to reason out why this stuff is happening. And that really helps me. Seriously, it does. And, and then we're just gonna continue. Now, subtlety is, is the, the word of the day, right? Because we can always get darker, but if we go too dark, there's really nowhere to go. We paint ourselves in a corner. So what we want is an extreme subtlety right so with extreme subtlety is when we really and also the distance so you see how there's a really soft gradation here and how I do that is if I want that gradation I'll lift up to maybe five inches and again I'm moving right and where it's darker towards her her jaw I'm gonna be much closer and as I'm closer, um, I'm moving, but I'm also looking at the value. And it's much darker on the edge of that jaw or the mandel, depending on, you know, if you're thinking about anatomical forms or just the word jaw. Either it's fine. And so basically just darkening that up. We're in the detail mixture. So the great thing about the detail mixture is that it keeps us from going too dark. And that's what you want. You want to keep it from, you don't want to have the ability to go too dark. So by working in that detail mixture of the mixture, ink mixtures that I, that I developed, is that it keeps you from, from getting too dark too early because of the nature of the mixture. And as we go up in mixtures to the light mixture and then a detail mixture, and you'll see that your ability to get darker grows but in a very slow pragmatic way and that's what we want so 
right here, if we look, we can see that uh, we have this sternocleidomastoid coming here. You really can't see it on her. She's not a, an incredibly muscular person. So, and this, this side of the sternocleidomastoid is relaxed. This side is contracted. But we do have to realize that right over here on the back half of her shoulder is the trapezius. So knowing that the trapezius muscle is here and coming down over here, and this space is basically no muscle, we can definitely start turning in the direction of the grain of the skin, right? And so that's what you want to do. You want to do the grain of the skin if you can. And that would be really, really great because when you are doing the grain of the skin, you're actually uh, kind of mentally imagining your hand going over her shoulder, right? And by doing that, you're feeling the three dimensions and that's gonna translate into your work. It really does work. One moment. Okay, great. So, so let's come over here and get back to business here. So once again, I'm going to darken this just a little bit. And I just want to feel this turning of the forms. So as I'm making this value from dark to light, I'm moving in the direction of that trapezius, right? Because knowing the anatomy, I could really feel that trapezius muscle and what it does and how it moves. And kind of imagining myself being, uh, being right there and, and seeing how that trapezius is turning. And also imagining the shape and, and how it turns, I can get a much more three-dimensional approach on this. Just like so. And so I hope, hey, Miss, Mr. Mike Gass, how are you? All the way from Michigan. And Mr. Bob Squeeze, how are you? All the way from California. Great to see you guys. So, so happy holidays to both of you. Thank you so much for hanging out. Bob, great to see you, my guest. Always a pleasure and an honor to see you. So that is so great. Honor to see Mr. Mr. Bob Squeeze, just incredible artist there. So thank you so much. And so, so how you been? Mike, haven't seen you in a long time. Been thinking about you and you know, we love when you're here at the live streams, giving your great insights and everything like that. My guest has been uh, on and off uh, a friend of the channel. Oh my goodness, since like 2018, I think, right, Mike? So thank you so much. So as you can see, I'm making that turn here. And as I'm turning this way, I'm also going to do the turning of the forms of the sternocleidomastoid and kind of following the grain of the skin. You might not be able to see it now, but that really does a great service to the work. And we'll just come over here like this. There we go. And so definitely, even though I'm not going dark, I'm establishing where that trapezius is. And then right here, the sternocleidomastoid coming down. And then the transition tone. So you see, doing these different things are gonna go a long way. Plus I'm, I have masked off her face, so we're not getting overspray where we don't want. We're only spraying where we want to spray. So these customized shields, really help us to be very exact on where we're spraying. Uh, so uh, is everyone having connection issues or is it just Mr. Brad? 
Uh, Gary says, can he ask, where does the detail mixture fit into the line of inks recording? Uh, yes. So this is how it goes. In the very beginning, great question, Gary. I use a detail mixture. It's specially light, and basically that is just for establishing uh, the tonal values, but in a very, very light way, right? A very, very light way. Keeps me from going too dark, but allows me to get these uh, tonal relationships. And then it's sort of like a pre-wash or pre-paint, and then coming in with the light mixture, and that sort of begins to establish the turning of the forms, going from light to dark, getting some of those really rich mid-tones. And then of course the medium mixture, medium mixture is fantastic. It starts establishing those darks, right? Start getting those, uh, that contrast, right? Getting that contrast down. And then once that's done, then we come in with the white pastel for the highlights and then the dark mixture for those dark highlights. And we end up with a painting that just has, you know, incredible contrast and the forms are turning. So I think like an oil painter when I'm airbrushing, it's all about making those, those forms turn, right? We want, we want this trapezius to feel round. We want this sternocladomastoid to feel round. These are all separate shapes that are being, that the light is affecting and revealing. So right here we have the clavicle, uh, right, the clavicle right here. So we are actually concentrating on making this clavicle a three-dimensional form. And then right over here we have what is called the acromion process. Acromion process is interesting because that's where the clavicle, the, the clavicle and the the uh, scapula and the deltoid and also the the arm actually all meet so the clavicle the scapula and the deltoid and the trapezius they all meet at this one spot at the acromion process so those are the landmarks that I like using because it kind of gives me a road map as to where I'm going to go you know and uh, so that's really important. So Willie, you're having connection issues. Uh, can, can everyone hear me? So let me know if anyone is having trouble uh, getting, uh, get, you know, hearing me or seeing me. That would be great. And so, so far so good. Uh, I didn't hear of anyone having connection issues besides Brad and Willie. Hopefully that will be fixed. I am going to go on to uh, my own channel here and see if I can can see if I'm having issues. Let's see. I'm going to come over here, YouTube, and okay. So now I'm going to take a quick listen. Okay, I'm hearing myself pretty good, so so it might be just the connection issues that uh, people are having. Just bear with me, we'll bear with YouTube. Hopefully that will be rectified really soon. We can only hope, right everybody? And, and let's see, we're going to come back. There we go. Okay, so we are back in business. Some audio cracking, but 90% okay. So the audio cracking is maybe I'll just move my mic away a little bit. And this way, perhaps I won't be getting any, any shaking on the table. That might be causing it. Uh, am I working with a border? Yes, my friend. I actually put tape here, blue tape. And I also have this border here, sort of a two-prong method there. Uh, so yeah, so definitely connect. Great question, Mike. And so Willie says it's lag, doesn't think it's him, so that's good news. And so pretty cool. So we're just gonna continue trying to make these forms turn. I don't know if you remember that movie with Raquel Welsh where she made herself really small. And I think it was Fantastic Voyage or something. And she went inside the body. I think like we make ourselves not that small, but kind of feel these forms and how they would turn if you were like 
much smaller and just really imagine how they turn towards the light and that really helps me. It's a lot of imagination. It's a lot of really having the knowledge of anatomy and using the airbrush. But imagination is really important for, for painting uh, realistically, I feel. A lot more than I thought years ago. I use my imagination a lot like that, you know, with the grain of the skin and stuff like that. Friend, yes, that was, oh, that was great. That was a great movie, right, uh, Willie? Uh, Bob, that was just fantastic. Yeah, so that's it, you know, trying to make ourselves small and really feel this this deltoid over here, right? This, actually, this is not the deltoid starts here. This actually is the uh, trapezius coming down, and I think this is the deltoid starting there. That's true. So just trying to kind of feel the light as it is touching these surfaces and then really try and feel the three-dimensional qualities of this. And also thinking of the grain of the skin, just like the grain of, let's say, wood or, or anything else, like what is a good thing, like the way that the grain kind of goes, or... Okay. See how much ink I have left? Plenty of ink, that's true. I heard a weird noise. Sometimes when you hear a weird noise, you become an airbrush whisperer. And so you just check it out, make sure it is nothing, nothing tight, you know, like anything that is not 100% dry in the nozzle or something like that could cause something weird. So as you work with your airbrush more and more, a particular airbrush, you'll just know when there's a weird sound. Even though others might not hear it, you'll know if you become an airbrush whisperer. And right here, bring this down. Now I don't want to go too much in this, right? Because if I develop this too much, it'll be way ahead of everything else. So in working in this, uh, this method, of working in transparency with these Airbrush India inks. You want to build up these, these relationships, tonal relationships slowly. I see a lot of academic artists today, they will go ahead and develop the eye, like really develop it with light, shade, and shadows and reflected light and go to the other eye. I'm not here to say that's the right or wrong way, but for me, I want to feel the whole painting coming together. I want her, I want my subject to be a full organism, right? I want that organism to develop together, not to have a, you know, a committee of pieces that, you know, I, come, I paint and hopefully they come together at the end because chances are they won't come together. You'll have a realistic painting, but I don't think that we would have a, a painting that feels like a complete organism. Now, Angra, John Augusta Dominic Angra said, you want to paint the whole painting and you want to continue painting the whole painting so as it's done, it kind of falls into completion as opposed to this kind of check and balances kind of go down the line. Uh, this way you can bring everything up together and kind of decide as you're going what you want darker, what you want lighter, because you're seeing it's like playing chess. If you ever played chess and just watched one part of the board, if you have an opponent that's pretty good, they're going to keep you looking at that part of the board and they're going to give you a checkmate over from the other part. So the same thing with the uh, same thing going on with with painting, you want to see the whole painting as it go as you do it. So as you see, I didn't develop this all the way, but that's because I don't want to get ahead. So you have to know when to pull back the reins a little bit, because we have to make sure that the the neck area, the clavicle, the sternum, her breast, her shoulders, her deltoids are all coming together, and. Um, you know, there's no rush, right? There definitely is no rush. So you see, 
now as I darken this area and just look at this right do you see how as I darkened this I darkened it a lot so that means that if I went further and even developed it further it would be so much more out of balance so now I know I have my work to do on her face and hair to keep up with everything and let's see what I uh, missed uh, oh the lung scene in Fantastic Voyage Bob was amazing and my guest says he's more of a voyage to the bottom of the sea type oh that was a great movie definitely Bob says he must cook again happy creative new year Bob always a pleasure thanks for hanging out I hope that, uh, as they say in Sp Spain, buen provecho, uh, bon appetit and all that stuff. And uh, looking forward to hanging out with you here on the live streams and on the internet, Mr. Bob. So thank you so much for everything that you do for the channel. And so that is so cool. Three cheers for Mr. Squeeze. Nameless subscriber, how are you? Wonderful to see you. How's everything? Always great to see you from, from Southern California. Uh, always a pleasure. So thank you so much for hanging out. So right now, see how I'm a little darker than I want to be? My first inclination is what? Get my eraser and start erasing. But just as, you know, for my regulars, tell me why I wouldn't erase at this stage? why I wouldn't erase right now uh, if ever anyone gets it right they get free candy at the register uh, on the way out so let's see so uh, okay so we'll find so why wouldn't I erase after I just sprayed so just a quick question out there see who is uh, paying attention to my ramblings uh, I, know <laughs> I know I do ramble so right now I think we could work on her hair. What do you say? Some hair action? I think that could be good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and go to little boy's room and I'm going to turn on the kettle. Yes, Gary, paper is still wet. And same thing, nameless. The paper is wet and when it's wet, it will damage it. So we have to wait for that to dry and make sure that we put what we want to do in back of our head. So this way, We'll have plenty of time after we work on the hair to come back and lighten that up and maybe come in with a little bit of the white mixture. A little bit of a point of departure of what we were doing uh, earlier in the uh, series. So I'll be right back, guys. Talk amongst yourselves. So thank you everybody for waiting and uh, just uh, we, with the, I'm going to make some hot chocolate so I'm just waiting for that to fully heat up. 
So let's see what I missed here. Uh, so right here, now that's a great question. Mike says, where did I go too dark? Not really, just in relationships. So right now we're working on relationships as opposed to values. So right here, I kind of went a little too dark. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to compensate that before I make the real decision is work on her hair and then I'm going to cover everything but her hair. I'm going to spray in her hair and then I'm going to uh, cover everything but her face and darken her face a little bit. And then we're going to revisit this area and see just how much we have to lighten or darken, right? So it's all about relative value uh, as opposed to everything else. And Gary says he heard a lot of uh, a lot on UK news about the snow some of you guys are getting. Yeah, we actually lucked out here in the metropolitan New York area in New Jersey and New York State. This part of New York State didn't get anything, not even one snowflake. However, upstate New York, like Buffalo, western New York, they got like seven feet of snow. They were like like a disaster area from from the president, so uh, there's something like 30 people, 20 something to 30 people passed away. Just terribly tragic. I mean, it was, it's really quite horrifying. So I'm looking for the hair freehand shield, and do I have it? Now, if I don't have it, there's ways I can do it. We have ways of making this work. Okay, here we go. There we go. So I do have the customized shield for the hair. And this is going to just help us spray where we want and not where we don't. So let's see. I'm going to come right here. And I just like it when a plan comes together. What about you guys? That's always a good feeling. Okay, so you want to make sure that the most important thing are these areas of uh, these areas of the edges, right? We want to make sure we get that correct, and that is uh, a number one important. And Willie says he didn't get any. Thank God. Yes, thank goodness. Uh, we're gonna get it. I think we're gonna get ours. Uh, but it's going to take, you know, maybe we don't get our snowstorms until late January, early February, I think. What do you think, Willie? You feel that way again this year? We're looking at a late January, early February thing going on. Interesting here. I see that I revisited this and this comes down straight. So I'm going to put a freehand, I'm going to put a piece of paper. And I want to cover this. So like I said earlier, those little uh, little things that we do to uh, kind of go to the next, you know, make those changes really help out a lot. Let's see here. Oh, I got a light I can turn on. That's going to help. So I have this studio light here. Let's see how that works. Okay, that looks better. I have more info. So I can put this here, and that's going to cover this edge here that I don't want to lose. And just want to make sure I have it. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So now I have this paper just working on that little bit of an edge that uh, I kind of didn't get when developing the uh, customized shield. So now I'm happy. And I'm going to make this dark right here. This dark comes down. Okay, so right here I have a little slit of dark, so I can just go like that, and then I'm not going to lose that. So it's a lot of planning, right, when it comes to airbrush. Oh yeah, Willie as well, thanks. Last count was 53. 53 people died, boy? Oh my god, that's so tragic. Yeah, I love snow, but not so much anymore. Not if it's killing people, right? And that's so sad. Uh, my, uh, with my guest says he hears there is another fort coming from the front, coming from the west. Oh my God, that is crazy. 
We're going to get almost 60 degrees on New Year's here. Okay, so now I'm going to spray her hair. And just kind of come over here very lightly. I'm just really getting the relationships. I'm going to do more hitting and moving. And so you, is it well, is it going to be going back to those poor people in Buffalo? Because that's just horrible that they have to put up with even more. How much more can they take? They had two six-foot snowstorms already this year. And we're still in December. And that's just tragic. And once again, I'm just spraying and moving. And we have the ear cut uh, covered. So that's serendipitous. And I do see where I'm going to keep it light. So I'm just going to make sure that I kind of avoid these areas that I have mapped out for the light. And these little things really help, you know, these these uh, kind of plans, you know, to set up these plans so, uh, you know, we plan to fail as opposed to fail to plan. So I really uh, go over that in my online course, which you can see in the description field, where I really talk about how planning everything out is really uh, to your benefit. Hey, Mr. Braden, good to see you all the way from Edmonton. How are you? And Dwayne says, been getting a lot of rain over there in the, uh, in the central coast of Cali. Wow, that's unusual getting rain. Uh, no problem with uh, flooding or, or landslides or anything like that. Uh, is there, Dwayne? I hope not. And Willie says, we got a ton of rain, but it was warm by the next day. Yes, New York City, even parts of New Jersey was flooded out. Uh, not my part, thank God, but it was totally flooded, and uh, then it froze, so that was just tragic altogether. Anyone get any camera equipment or anything like that for the holidays? I love hearing about camera equipment. I am a avid photographer. Uh, love it, love photography, love what it does, love the expression, how we can you know, set up our own, our own poses and using catch lights and hair lights and kicker lights and gels and everything. So anyone out there get a camera or any kind of lenses for Christmas or Hanukkah? So I'm about, I would say, maybe about, hmm, maybe about three and a half to four inches away. And you can see I'm hitting and moving, dodging and weaving, you know? And there's a dark area right here of hair. So I want to make sure, though, that I have a magnet to keep from underspray. Underspray is not your friend. Uh, overspray is not your friend, but at least you see overspray coming. Underspray is an insidious enemy that will sneakily ruin your artwork. So you want to make sure you stay one step ahead of underspray, which is that... You know, your, your customized uh, shields want to lift and say, hey, uh, paint and ink, come right in and ruin your edges. So that's something we have to fight against. So as you can see, we're working on our hair. Looks like we're not doing anything. But when we lift this shield, we're going to say, yep, we were doing something. So just kind of hitting and moving. When you're doing something like this, we really want to make sure that we don't go too dark, too early, too wet, too fast. Those are your main concerns. If you can concentrate on those concerns, and you're going to be okay. So, you know, we're going to have super hard edges here that we're going to address later. But right now we're just working on, on edges, right? That's all we're working on right now. So right here, I see we might have a problem with this contour. So I'm going to spray this down. And we may have to reestablish this contour because I don't think it, I think it matches up, but we're going to take a look and see. So I'm kind of doing, I'm going to stay away from that. Not feeling too good about that. But we can stay away from that and do that freehand. 
So I have that detail mixture of four and four, right? Four drops of detail mixture, four drops of water. So now I'm going to come in with straight detail mixture, kind of double down with the detail mixture. And since I was working here, we're going to come here, go a little darker, start developing some of the light and shade pattern of this hair. So we're just going to come in and put like eight drops of the detail mixture straight up, not on the rocks, just straight up. And uh, there we go. And make sure everything's spraying right. And so now let's start thinking three dimensions here. So I'm going to spray where it's darker, kind of avoid where it's lighter, like in these highlights here. Just kind of begin the tonal fabric, the chiaroscuro, so to speak. I think Caravaggio, right? Caravaggio was a great artist that loved to use the ballet of light and dark to create depth and power and drama in his work. And that's what we want to do. Power, drama, depth, all those different things. And that is super important. Same thing here. See how it's a little bit darker? So I'm taking advantage of that detail mixture straight up to come in and go darker. And let's see, uh, what did I miss? Oh, so Willie says he's been in, uh, getting into micro photography. So you have a macro lens, my friend? Love to hear more about that. And how's the weather over there in Edmonton, Braden? Great to see you. And, um, and Nayla says, wish he did, but all he got for Christmas is no sleep. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. I know things will get better. No winter lasts forever. And so things will get better. And Nayla says, unrelated to the holidays, did get a used computer, nice. That's beautiful. So it's new to you and that's all that matters. And Nayla says, Tim, does your airbrush machine have a built-in water filter? What kind of machine are you running? I am running the uh, Silent Air, uh, I'll get the exact, Silent Air Super Silent 50. And it's a one gallon tank, but I'm at low PSI, so it's no big deal. And so that is great for me. Plus, it enables me to paint in a, you know, I have neighbors that live downstairs. So I have a California Air Tools, like a six gallon tank, but that's too loud. I only kind of run that during the day. But, you know, it's important to, you know, make sure I, I don't make too much noise. So that's why I like the silent air. And uh, let's see, Mike says, Time for Tim to turn his hat around. Oh, it gets in the way. Sorry about that. I'll try and be more mindful, my friend. And Dwayne says, no camera stuff here, but a gift certificate to Coast. Nice. Oh, I can't wait to hear what you get, Dwayne. That's great. My guest says, oh, wow, Coast has a lot of nice stuff. They sure do. And uh, just, you know, for airbrush artists, it's great, especially for custom painters. I think they're really amazing. Uh, so... Yeah, I love what Coast Airbrush is doing. They're, uh, they're a great influence on the airbrush world, very positive, and kind of a, let's face it, they're kind of a torchbearer of airbrush. So I uh, just want to say uh, thank you for Coast and for, uh, for Dave Monning for what he does. Uh, really fantastic stuff. Continue doing it. And... Uh, Hope to see a lot more and growth for them in 2000. And so there we go. So we're keeping that edge. How nice is that? So that was successful. And put that up towards the edge there. Okay, so now we're working on this side with that detail mixture. See how dark we're on this side? So let's uh, go ahead and but I'm also trying to maintain these really large dark areas, right? These large dark and light areas. Even though I'm blocking in, it's like in chess. When you retreat, you also want to attack. So it's okay to retreat and come back and fight another time, but you're setting up an attack while you're retreating. And that's exactly what I'm doing when I'm blocking in. I'm blocking in, but I'm setting up now the attack of these light and dark patterns. 
And that's going to go a long way in taking, taking uh, the attack and, and really setting up what I want to do. And so you see how, if I go down a little bit, you can see how I am kind of setting up these light and darks. And again, we have this, um, this freehand, this customized shield here. And that's allowing us to, to keep everything clean, to paint where we want to paint, and keep clean what we want to clean. And this goes for oil paint, pastel, and drawing. That's the main thing. You don't want to, you don't want to be covering area that you don't wish to cover. I know that sounds quite logical, but it's so true. You just don't want to. You just want to make sure that you are keeping your intent and not not over spraying or over spilling into areas which, you know, is not in your plans. And worrying about underspray, worrying about overspray. Uh, keeping it so I don't want to go too dark because if I go too dark with this it's going to draw everything off I want to gradually darken that hair so I think I can actually lift this up right now maybe I'll go another pass over here before I do let's see if I missed anything oh yeah that's where Dwayne gets all his stuff that's fantastic my guest says he has to hit him up for 125 micron paint strainers I heard good things about that Nameless says, is that the Silent 50 or the Silent 5000? Is it possible to get a peek at the unit? Uh, oh, I wish I did. It's around the corner, but it's the, five, it's the 50, so it's tiny. And it serves my purposes, you know, uh, um, Nameless. Dwayne says, give them a call. They are the best. If they can't help you, they point. Oh, that's fantastic, definitely. The Silent Air is not cheap. I had to save up for a long time. And then I got a really good deal for like under $800, which is great because it usually sells for 11 so I got a very good deal. And Gary says, do you hand cut the shields or use a Cricut cutter? I actually use a Cameo 4, and that works really great, Gary. Uh, just love it. Uh, does great things for me. It, it's a while. It takes a while to learn how to use something like that. Plus, I'm a kind of a computer geek, so I kind of combine that with digital painting software and just working on that, bringing that all together, and and uh, it really works well. Uh, it's something that I kind of devised over the past two years, and just so happy, you know, with how the technique comes. And I use that technique for all the mediums that I do, not just airbrush, and you know. Using digital art and kind of using that with in conjunction with uh, you know a plotter and all that really does fantastic stuff. Really takes it to the next level. Okay, so I'm as dark as I want to get right now, and let's start removing our our magnetics magnetos. And once I remove this, we're gonna take a look at it. I'm gonna go make myself some hot chocolate. I'll be right back and then we'll assess and attack. So right now we are in assess mode once we take a look. It's gonna look like we look like I didn't do much in the hair, but wait till we pull this off. You're gonna say, wow, you put a lot in there, Tim. But moral of the story is use a mixture that is so light that you can't go too dark. A lot of people go straight in with Createx and they don't have a very uh, definitive mixture and that's where one can go too dark so my ink mixtures actually help you circumvent that and here we go so look at that that's not bad so very happy uh, I think the edge work was really good especially over here I may just come in here and adjust but as you can see as we lay in her hair we're really getting that likeness already even though we really haven't turned, we really haven't uh, turned the forms a lot by darkening this center line, but we're definitely in good shape, right? So, uh, so we definitely could work on darkening this area and different things like that. And Nameless says, "Thanks, Mike." Also, thanking Mike. 
California Air Tools are great. I love California Air Tools, but they have a two year shelf time if you use them like me. I kill them within two years. Uh, I do everything, I drain them and everything, but they can't take someone who's doing like 30 hours of airbrushing a week or more, and that kind of kills them. What it does, it kills them to the point where they get super loud and sounds like a panzer tank coming down the road, and that kind of kills their actual reason of, of using the California Air Tools as opposed to, let's say, a Husky or, you know, one of those... Uh, other brands so so right now I'm feeling good at where we are we have a nice tonal framework and we're set up to really take this further we're still gonna be in the detail mixture a little bit and we're gonna come down here I only use this uh, the straight detail mixture over here because we wanted to take the darker of the hair a little bit up like turn it up a notch like Everill says and so we're going to erase some of these pencil lines as we go but i'm actually pleased with what we have so far uh if it looks you know one third as beautiful as paula i am going to be very happy so i will be right back let me go uh and take care of this hot chocolate <laughs> you want fresh water? Ain't no fresh water. So I have hot chocolate, but the bad thing is, is I don't have any more half and half. And hot chocolate with half and half is really amazing. A lot of calories, but really great. Uh, uh, yes, do love California Air Tools. They're great for the first year for me, but I kill them. So uh, that's pretty much. I think the main thing is that we really try and um, and baby our air airbrush compressors. The better, the more we work with them, the more they work with us. So I agree. California Air Tools is is really good. Uh, California Air Tools is quite enough to use indoors. Just make sure that you maintain it and uh, maybe contact uh, California Air Tools when it starts getting louder. Okay, so now we're looking at Paula. And remember, we want to darken her face. But what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use any freehand shields. I don't mind a little overspray over here because I'm going to concentrate on her eye. So let's go to her eye on camera left and let's see and there we go. All right so now we're just with this straight detail mixture. Uh, there's no dilution so we're going straight detail. I was going to go with the four and four but I think we could turn it up a notch here and just Kind of come over here. I do see there's a little line there, so I'm going to erase that later. You know, patience and you know, knowing when to do it is super important. Know when to say when.
pulled in here, it's going to pull it down. They're little tiny dagger strokes. And do like a little pincer movement, come this way and go that way. Kind of meet and find that shape. Same thing here, we'll go this direction and then this direction. And try and be subtle, try not to go darker than the actual reference, right? Stay as light as the reference. A lot of times we may get too dark, especially when we're doing details such as this. as we go so there's no no rush in erasing so here is the retro orbicularis oculi fat which is the fat compartment above the eyelid upper eyelid and below the eyebrow and that's a fat compartment on the outside outside half of that space and it's a three-dimensional form so it's creating a shadow so we're going to create the shadow that it creates and then we're going to make sure that we have this area turn. And just change our distance as we want to go lighter. And see how we're starting to create the three dimensions of her eye here. And we're not worried about underspray, overspray of any of that. Trying to get a little bit of dimension, a little bit of uh, pencil shaving over there. I'm going to change the hose. I don't like the way that hose is sounding, so I'm going to put in this other hose here. There we go. Now I'm now I'm cooking with gas. And we're just going to create much better, sometimes the right hose. That one had a separate pack valve on it, a Mac valve. So, you know, kind of overkill. Pack valve and Mac valve, this is just a straight hose. See how we're making that eye turn, but we're not going crazy, right? We're keeping everything in order. Let me make sure that I have this thoroughly in focus. Probably not, right? What are you thinking, Tim? Okay, right there. Okay, so let's go on over to the eye on camera right. So we're going to come over here and let's develop this eye a little bit better. Hey, what's up there? Mr. Clutch Pyro Patrick, how is everything? All the way from Massachusetts. Great to see you. And uh, so I do see that we have. Hey, Patty, how's everything? All the way from Illinois. Great to see you. Happy New Year and happy holidays. I'm just going to get rid of this person here. Uh, remove them. Be gone with you. This uh, spam person with these uh, porn messages. They have to go. Okay, they are gone. Hopefully they won't come back. And uh, so, so glad you're here, Patty and Patrick. That is perfect. And happy holidays, you guys. I'm so glad you're here. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna work on the eye on camera camera right because remember what we do on one eye we have to do on the other that's just them's the rules right everybody and now I have this other hose in there boy does that really feel good having the right hose wow that feels so much better I just can't tell you remember you know you become like an airbrush whisperer when you feel that something's not quite right when you're using the same airbrush for years and it's extreme custom airbrush. If you're going to use the same airbrush for years, this is the airbrush to get because it's totally versatile. 
You can do many because I have a point three zero, but you can see the detail I'm getting. Look at the uh, the size of this. If I could show you, if I have a penny, or maybe even show you a. This is a AAA battery, so look how small that eye is. So that's the detail you can do with the customized Dream Patriot Arrow when you have even with a point three zero because it's not the needle and nozzle size, it's really about uh, the aerodynamics. And that's what I do with the airbrush, is I work with the aerodynamics and adjust it, and work with things such as the, in, the, the uh, inverse square law, and the physics of, of the air, and the angles, and the cone, and all of that. And that's how I come up with my personalized airbrush. So now I have my really hot, hot chocolate, and I'm gonna take a sip. It's extra hot because I don't have the, I don't have the, um, unfortunately, the half and half to cool it down. So it's like lava right now. And now we're just gonna, again, we're gonna work on the retro Piquilaris Oculi fat. And let's make this turn. kind of feel what it would be like to kind of traverse this the, the underside of this shape as it comes over here and then down for a zygomatic bone or cheekbone right and so as you can see we're kind of uh, coming up up here and we can see right here is the temporal bone and the temporal ridge and so we're going to go ahead and just indicate that subtle you know if it's not that if it's not that uh pronounced you just gotta make sure you don't overdo it because then you can change the nature of of her likeness and that's what we don't want to do we don't want to worry about painting the likeness but we have to worry about being subtle when we need to be and right here you have the lower eyelid and the three-dimensional form that is and as that turns away from the light and kind of feel that and just be super subtle and now we're starting to get some of the three-dimensional forms of the retropicularis opalite fat on both sides and her likeness is going to come so i'm not worried uh and let's see yes so we did have that bot mike and hopefully they got the message. We can only hope. So I'm going to go down the zygomatic bone here and kind of work on or the cheekbone and increase my distance. Kind of bring that down. And there's a zygomatic bone and the space between the zygomatic bone and the jaw bone which is called the mandible and you can see how we're going to get a little more intense right here because of that space between the cheekbone and the jawbone. There's a real space and that's why it gets much darker over there. And now we want to feel the, the, the uh, cheekbone actually turn towards, towards the light, right? The light is up here and this area is getting the light. And this cheekbone is turning towards the light, so I'm kind of going with the grain of the skin and kind of moving with that cheekbone, getting that turn. And, you know, it's that imagination of getting really tiny and really feeling what it's like to uh, imagine what it's like to be on her cheek and travel along it. I know that sounds weird, but it's all for art. Now here's one thing that I started to do which was really great. This I just did last week. Rather than come in and try and get some exact areas with the airbrush, why do that? You're playing for keeps. Why play for keeps when you don't have to? Uh, that just is counterproductive. So I have a stump that I use for graphite and I want you to watch this because this is one of those rubber meets the road moments. 
it still might be a little wet here, so I'm going to uh, avoid that for a little bit. But right here, you can see, I could use my graphite pencil, I mean my graphite stump, and I could just use that ever so lightly, and then I can go over with airbrush and then erase it. But this is allowing me to kind of feel out the anatomy, and this way I can uh, not make decisions that I may have to fix uh, in airbrush, which is far more detrimental than if I just tried and kind of estimated it with this stump and some graphite on it. So watch as I come down here. I can really feel the anatomy of her nose. And get it right, right? Get it right. Uh, and so right here, you know, I can be much more subtle. So now if I want to erase, I can just tap that ever so easy and kind of lift that, right? And then that gives me a blueprint of what I have to do with the airbrush. And this could translate whether you're working in oils or working in pastel or working in color, you know, like with create text or whatever. It really uh, translates. And you'll see that I have over the years, and many years I've been doing this, I always find ways to uh, circumvent problems that arise. And that's why it's good to take my classes because if you take my classes, my online course, you're going to learn a lot of those things that I was able to circumvent after years of frustration. It's a win-win situation for you guys because you don't have to deal with those frustrations. So now I have this, I can come in with my airbrush and now I can just hit it and make it look like I was able to nail it. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you do it all in one shot. That means nothing. Is it impressive? Sure. Does it mean anything when it comes to the finished work? It means nada. So that's why you want to do everything to get that impression that you nailed it first time and circumvent those horrible mistakes. Oh, Patty, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And thank you always for hanging out. It's always a pleasure, Patty. And uh, thank you again. So look at that, we're at 11.02 already. This, this uh, live stream went fast because you all are so cool and I love hanging out with you. And this is just a total indication of that. And so as you can see, when I was able to come in with that stump, I could go exactly where I need to go without going too dark. I can maintain the subtlety and so that works and so you see I worked on a zygomatic bone and as it turns towards the maxilla over here same thing here we have the space between the zygomatic bone and the mandible or in layman's terms the space between the cheekbone and the jaw and I'm just going to pump that trigger and as it gets softer I'm going to increase my distance to get smoother gradations, keep pumping that trigger. All these different things I say, pumping the trigger, distance, take that really to heart because those are some of the techniques of the great airbrushers out there, the great airbrush artists. They will tell you they use them and it just gives versa versatility and, and just enable the artist to get the exact value they're looking for and just keeping that keeping that uh, subtlety uh, right there and, and same thing here we have a nice subtlety going right here at the filtrum and the cupid's bow and so you see how this is turning towards the light so you, I'm going pumping the trigger, moving around the form, and slowly getting it to really feel like uh, she's a three-dimensional person, that she has uh, features that are going in, features that are coming out. People 
features that are turning to the left, turning to the right, turning up, turning down. And all this stuff applies to color as well. Um, same thing, uh, very, very important. So now you see we, we're getting a nice turn. And before we do that, let's turn the forehead here. Again, we have the temporal bone right here. And then we just have this ridge. Then we have the nasal eminence. And then we have the superorbital eminences right here. And we don't see what's going on there. And then here we have the nasalis muscle. We're just going to bring this down on the side. The nasalis muscle right here. Bring that down. And of course we have the turning of the lower eyelid. We can't see the malar fat compartment. Uh, it could be the lighting. And also she's very thin and young. So that might be why we don't see the malar fat, but that's okay. We can look for it. So we're getting this turn here. We kind of can be a lot more subtle here. So I'm just going to settle this up. I'm also going to wait for it to dry so I can kind of soften this area up. We do have uh, quite distinct of the jowl fat here. We'll get to that, but I think we're doing okay. We're going to manually go ahead and paint in this dark slit of hair here. Sometimes with a small area like this, it's best to take it into your own hands and make sure you get it right, those edges really important same thing over here we're just going to make sure we get this edge correct and then we'll darken later we don't want to build rome in the day because if we go ahead and bring something too far forward too far along too dark it's no longer going to feel like the hole and that's what we're doing we're building the hole right the hole of her form that's so important I'm just going to darken this area here. And you know what? Why not? Just come in here. Now I'm not worried about edges. It's too soon to worry about edges. But we can kind of play around different areas that need work. And this right here, this edge here, we definitely can fix. Perpendicular, not parallel, one second rule, all that fun stuff. And a little more steady here. What's going on with me? We are using a lot of ink today. We are out, so we're putting in the ink. So that's good. When you use, in the course of an hour and a half, and if you refill your airbrush twice, three times, that's a good, that's a good session. So, you know, a lot of people say, Tim, why does it take a long time? because that's how it takes, that's how long it takes. Mine is not the question how long, mine is just the question doing it right and careful planning. And how long it takes, takes care of itself. And so I'm not concerned. Uh, I have paintings that I do in six hours, paintings that I do in 18 hours. It doesn't matter. It just matters the individual artwork and what that artwork demands from me. You might look at this piece and say, wow, this looks like an easy painting, Tim, but in reality, the, the painting will decide whether it's easy, not me. I'm going to worry about uh, getting this value right along here. And now, you know, I'm starting to get a nice surface texture. And it seems like the ink is just taking to the paper, just like butter. It really is beautiful. And that's what you want in all mediums, whether you're working in acrylic, or you're working in airbrush, in oil, in pastel. You want to start to create a surface texture where everything just starts to uh, accept the, the ink or the paint or the pastel. 
and that's what we were working on. So I know I have to come and kind of obliterate this edge with uh, eraser, but that comes later. I just want to work on this edge here, kind of calm this down by bringing in this shadow right here on this side. I'm just thinking about the whole picture, right? Not getting too involved over here. Right here, it's a little of a troublesome area, but nothing that I cannot plan to fix, and that's what I'm doing, planning to fix. And kind of setting up these little visual notes, visual note-taking that's gonna allow me to say, okay, now let's do this, let's do that. Now we weren't working on her mouth, we were coming down the center, so let's not avoid the mouth. And let's go right into it. Gary says, do you ever get cramps in your trigger finger on long jobs? When I take a break, I remember one time I was working on my online course and I wasn't doing more than two hours of airbrushing a day. And then when I went in and did an eight hour session, my hands cramped up like crazy. But now I'm airbrushing at a good clip every day and my hand seems to be conditioned, right? Our hand does become conditioned to this. Uh, for good or bad, and so that pretty much is uh, where I am right now. It's thank God I don't have cramps. And uh, my guess says, Tim, your long paintings are nothing compared to Steve Leahy's. He's doing a motorcycle and has nine hours in just the layout. Yeah, he's doing the long haul, right, uh, Mike? And you gotta admire that with Steve. You know, he's really putting in the hours on those very intricate paintings of the motorcycle and what he did with that wonderful snow scene at the creek. So yeah, I'm up there with you. I'm a big admirer of what that man does. Just a great skill level and just a pleasure to watch and he's very gracious on what he shares. So right back at you, Mike, definitely. Uh, he puts in the hours again. He doesn't worry about how long it takes. He just wants to get it done, you know? And uh, so Nayla says, do I airbrush every day? Oh, every day. Uh, you know, I do commissions and I do, uh, I sell my work. So yeah, so I always, to make sure I have enough food, <laughs> I make sure that I'm airbrushing every day. And I teach students, so that's about 20 hours a week teaching my students. And I'm airbrushing with them most of the time. So you figure 20 hours just with my students and another 20 hours of doing my own work and then the live stream so you're looking at you know about 45 hours a week airbrushing on a normal week you know at a normal week so now i remember we had that mental note of we were going to lighten up uh her trapezius muscle here so i'm just going to take this kind of non-aggressive eraser and remember, we're going to follow the grain of her skin. And that's what I'm doing. I'm following the grain of the skin. So even though I'm erasing, I'm doing a careful assessment of what I'm looking at. I know I was going to go in with the mouth, but this seems a little more pressing. Because I've been waiting a long time uh, to come in with this. And you see, I can definitely start getting texture and also feeling the shape of that trapezius going into the sternocleidomastoid which is all part of the area called the throat uh, or the neck there really is no such thing as a neck it's a composite of several muscles and and bones and skin but there really is no anatomical neck i find that fascinating everything they told me was lies And yes, he is a perfectionist and very good at it. Right, right there with you. Just amazing stuff. So definitely kudos to Mr. Steve Leahy and all he shares and everything. My use of the magnets that you see comes from Steve Leahy's live streams. Remember, you can catch Steve's live streams on Mondays at 6. Uh, Eastern Time, every Monday on Facebook, I believe it's Steve Leahy is uh, his name, uh, Stephen Leahy on Facebook. Very cool. And he gives stuff away every day, every week. He gives away a painting, so that's cool. 
He said something like he gave away like 10,000 worth of paintings this year. Now that's generosity. And he has a great following, and rightfully so, as it should be. So now what I'm doing is, okay, so I'm going a little avant-garde. I'm taking things to a level I haven't done before, because now I just added another step. So what I'm doing now is I'm erasing, I'm reinforcing the grain of her skin, right? We talked about that, by going in a direction of the grain of her skin. But I'm also plowing the field for a step that I did. Normally in the past, I would do the white mixture only in the beginning. But now I do a, a white mixture right after the detail mixture layer. But I pr plow the field to make sure I don't get blue shift because that's one of the worst, one of the big drawbacks of airbrush is blue shift. And it's something that if you want to be an airbrush artist, you have to constantly be on the lookout for it and avoid it with all costs because it can ruin your painting like nothing else. Okay, so now you see I have that. So now what I want to do is I want to put the, everything is covered but her neck again. And we're going to do that avant-garde thing. And I think that's going to take us home. Take me home. Let's see. I want everything covered but a beautiful uh, body area, the sternocleidomastoid, the trapezius, the trachea, the clavicle, the sternum, the chromium process, and all that fun stuff. I love anatomy, and I know you know that by just seeing at my live streams, but knowing anatomy has definitely opened me up to things that I did not see and just had a proud of, I feel that just over the last six months, anatomy, my study, intense study of anatomy has created uh, a lot of, uh, a lot more clarity in my work and even getting more humanity in my work. So, and I think they could do the same for you. If you uh, you know went in a little bit uh, like real serious in anatomy, it will pay dividends. So something to think about. Food for thought, right? We have this wonderful uh, area here, so we want to make sure that we do not overspray. I'm going to actually come back in with the white mixture, and those who have followed me in the past know that this is way too late for the for the light the white mixture in my techniques of the past but now i'm taking it to the next level new year new technique and let's use uh, your fun airbrush in mind the vega everyone loves the vega three cheers for the vega i love this airbrush that's all i have to say i just really 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 love this airbrush so much and it's not like a super airbrush. I just love the way it feels. I love the way it feels in my hand. I love the red backing. I changed out the needle and nozzle combination with a Omni, uh, like an Omni 4000, and put that in and gives me just a little bit better control. And now I'm going to take my white mixture, which is... Uh, Drew Blair's 50-50 illustration white and uh, and then 50% of distilled water in there and we're getting the, it, this would be very similar to regular painting if you use zinc white zinc white is a very transparent white uh, it works really well it's like a glazing white if there's a such thing and I love it I think it's uh, really amazing and I would not use any other white than Drew Blair's 5050 illustration white. Now, why would I use only this? Because you can erase it. No other white, whether it's paint, ink, or whatnot, works in the way that this stuff works. It is the best for erasing. Okay, so now I have this situated. I have everything else with my custom 
uh, custom shields and now I'm going to now right there's a problem so I can see that the it started coming out but that's why it's important to move since I was moving I didn't create a big problem so for some reason ink is coming out or paint is coming out before I pull back and I will not go any further if that's happening so it definitely is happening so rather than fool with that I'm gonna try once more to see if that works I'm gonna put a little more white in if that doesn't work then all I do is change the airbrush deal with this I clean my airbrushes immediately but sometimes a little tiny bit of dry white paint could have got in there and contaminated things and that has been known to happen just a little bit like that and just cause things to go south I do have a spare spare white a spare piece of paper right here let's take a look And I'm going to put the backing on and we're going to see if this works. Like I said, you know, when you become an airbrush whisperer, you'll see that. Now this is a little bit stiff right over here. So I'll just loosen this. The, uh, I'm going to loosen the uh, tension of the needle spring. So when in doubt, draw it out. I'm not drawing out my Vega. I'm going to go ahead and give it a good cleaning. That's very rare if you watch my live streams. It's very rare that anything like that happens. So I have my, this is the Omni 4000. Another one of my favorite airbrushes. I'm going to put Drew Blair's 5050 illustration white. There's never a reason to work with an airbrush that is not totally 100% better than it comes from the factory. Never work with an airbrush that is subpar in performance. Now you can see we're cooking with gas. This is working. So, you know, you definitely don't want to play with that. So now my airbrush is working perfectly. This is the Omni 4000, another one of Tim's favorites. Okay, so now let's go ahead. And I'm going to work right here on the sternocleidomastoid. And we're going to add some white. And then we're going to have this light kind of turning along the trapezius. And again, we just want to make sure we get that turning. And now, with this white mixture, we are reinforcing the, that kind of translucent skin tone that we went ahead and did with the uh, with the face when we went in with the white after the detail mixture. Now when you're doing this at home in your studio, make sure that you're not going over a dark area of ink. If you are, you're going to get blue shift. Notice that I lightened the area with, with, the, um, with the eraser before I went in here, right? And the same thing right over here is just kind of bringing that down you see the uh, this sternocleidomastoid right here we're going to work on this clavicle the way the light's hitting it and kind of making sure that we are building up these lights right let's build up these lights slowly and you see we can get away with that detail mixture if it's very light without getting blue shift. So this is actually a very important, whoa, look at that. Put that over here. Whoop, that, that magnet was dirty, but nothing we can't clean. Okay, so uh, right over here, I'm just gonna put this magnet, kind of flew over. Just kind of work on this area of the deltoid and the chromium process over here. Bring that forward. Now we're not gonna worry about highlights. That comes later. But what we're worrying about is emphasizing 
uh, the forms that are turning towards the light and forms that are turning away from the light. And that's what we want to do. I'm going to get an aggressive eraser. That magnet kind of uh, went ahead and deposited ink. So not good, but I have an aggressive eraser here. And we're just going to get rid of that. There we go. As if it never happened. And let's go ahead and look down here. And once again, we're just going to... Now I'm going to answer your questions, guys. I just have to concentrate on this. Just bring this down. See how we bring that light down? Now she's starting to come to life. Even though we're very light, we can bring her to life because we're trying to get these translucent kind of glaze skin tones and we can do that very early on. So three cheers for the light mixture and having the guts to do the light mixture after we put in the detail mixture. Like I said, this is a new technique, a new variation of this technique. So it is taking things to a new a new level with the Airbrush India ink and the use of, of the white mixture. Just being a little more brave, right? And so very happy with this. Now when we lift this, we're going to see just how much it worked or didn't work, right? So I'm going to put my Omni 4000. Highly recommend that just as much as I recommend the Vega. Just the Vega has a little something in there, and that's causing something. So we are going to clean that after the live stream, not while you guys are here. Let's take a look and see how this is coming together. Now you can see that it's just really nicely set up, getting a nice kind of dreamy feel of this portrait. I'm very happy with it, and that's what we want. We want that dreamy feeling. So we're at 11.28, and let's see, we have, let's see if I got everyone. Uh, so my guest says uh, he had a Vega station wagon. Oh, those were great cars, definitely. Uh, Dwayne says, Createx illustration line is awesome. I have to definitely agree, just the way that it's engineered is really great stuff, Dwayne. Uh, Nameless says, not a bad plan, Mike. Mike says, Dwayne. You may want to think you you and may want to think I'm going to buy that next time. Cool. Okay, that's great, Mike. Mike says he bought out the local R source stock of regular Createx and Wicked. Wow. John Diekman, how are you? Great to see you. I didn't see you come in. How are you, sir? Happy New Year. And let's see. Dwayne says Wicked Line is great. And. Uh, and John says, good night. John, I missed you. I'm so sorry I didn't see you come in. Have a great night. And great night to uh, Mr. Clutch, Patrick, and Dwayne, and Mike Guess, and Nameless, and, and congratulations to the winners. And Willie says, good night, everyone. Happy New Year to you, sir. Thank you so much for all your support during the year. Uh, I'm going to try and do a live stream on Saturday because I don't have... I don't have any way to go, so it might happen. I might do that for you guys. And Happy New Year if I don't talk to you, but I think I'm going to do a Saturday night live stream. Gary, wonderful to see you. I'm so glad you you came by, and uh, cheers from in Scotland. And you too, my guest, stay safe and Happy New Year. So we actually made it. So not bad. I, I'm liking where she's going. So where the technique is going where it hasn't gone before is that extra step of adding the white mixture right after the detail mixture to really get more of a kind of softer kind of more how should I say a softer more transparent kind of sense of the shadows kind of calms that down especially in the clavicle uh, area so when we come back and we'll work on the white the hair everything and oh fantastic Willie always a pleasure if I do the live stream I'll send you guys an email so that is always cool it's 11 30 happy Wednesday night everybody always a pleasure you guys are the best 
and you make my Wednesday night so much better. I hope you all know that, and I look forward to 2023 with you all. And God bless everyone. You take care.